Hi, welcome to the channel. Normally it's about image analysis and image processing. Sometimes I do some little science videos. Now, recently I, I lectured to the medical class on adrenergic mechanisms. And during that lecture I said, um, I would talk about the difference between adrenaline and epinephrine and whether or not we should use the phrase adrenaline or epinephrine. I never quite got back to it uh, on that lecture, so I thought, let's make a quick YouTube video about it. Now, it means that I need to tell you a little bit of the history. And it starts way back in 1856 with the Vulpian reaction, where Vulpian had shown that a small amount of the extract from what was called the suprarenal gland at the time caused a colour change uh, with particular chemicals. It could go crimson red or it could go a, a kind of coral green colour. So it was known that something came out of this suprarenal gland. Now in 1859, which Henry Salter had recognised that people who suffer from asthma as a constriction of the airways seemed to fare better if there was a sudden excitement or if they were alarmed. Now, we now know why that is and the relationship between the suprarenal gland or the adrenal gland as we call it and the response in asthmatics, but we'll come back to that maybe at another, another video. Now in the timeline, the next date that I want to talk about is 1878, chap called Jokichi Takemine. Now he will feature later in this story, but I just wanted to point out, just as an interesting uh, fact, that he studied in Glasgow at the Anderson College in Glasgow around about 1878. He came over uh, as a, an engineering student um, and, and possibly also studied some, some medicine at that time. Anyway, so that was 1878. The science begins in 1896 with Oliver and Schaefer, a famous experiment in which they showed that the extract from the adrenal gland, and they particularly recognised that it was the adrenal medulla, the extract from that gland caused a big rise in blood pressure when it was administered to animals, maybe a cat or a dog or whatever animal they were studying at the time. So they knew that this gland, the, the suprarenal gland, released something which caused a rise in blood pressure. But the function of that renal gland wasn't very clear. And I've got this little uh, physiology textbook that a friend gave me as a 50th birthday present a number of years ago. This is from 1896 as well, this, this book. And they say, nothing, this is by uh, William Huxley, nothing certain is known of the functions of certain bodies which are sometimes called ductless, ductless glands. And these include the thyroid body, the thymus body, and the suprarenal body. So in 1896, according to this little uh, physiology textbook, we don't actually know what this suprarenal gland does. But Oliver and Schaefer have shown us that the extract from the adrenal gland certainly seems to cause a rise in blood pressure. A couple of years later, 1897 to 1899, and von Furth has extracted something from the suprarenal gland, which he calls suprarenin. And around about the same time, John Jacob Abel, who uh, is working in Johns Hopkins Hospital in uh, Baltimore, he extracts something that's not quite pure, but certainly causes a rise in blood pressure. And on the recommendation from a colleague or a friend, I can't remember the person's name, he decides to call his extract epinephrine. Now that's a crucial point here. That John Jacob Abel is, and it was Abel and Crawford. So Abel and Crawford are now calling the extract from the suprarenal gland epinephrine. The John Jacob Abel is a very, very well respected uh, uh, medical scientist around that time in America. So his terminology will have carried a certain amount of weight. He, of course, went on to be a founder of Journal of Pharmacology and Experimental Therapeutics. I think also the Journal of Biological Chemistry, JYO Chem. So, very, very well known um, scientist. Now, this is around about 1897, 1899. And in around about that time, 1899 to 1900, Kizil Wukanaka 
and Yokichi Takamine, and Wuenaka is working in Takamine's lab, which is funded by Park Davis, the drug company. Wuenaka manages to crystallize a pure extract from the suprarenal gland, or let's just call it the adrenal gland, because Takamine then takes out a patent in which he refers to the substance which is is purified as adrenaline and Park Davis have the patent for that. So now what we've got is a situation where John Abel is calling the extract from the suprarenal gland epinephrine and Yokichi Takamine and Park Davis have patented the uh, slightly modified extraction method and they're calling their purified compound adrenaline. So there we have the story to that point at 1900. The Abel is calling it epinephrine, Takamine is calling it adrenaline. Now skip forward a few years to 1904 and we have Henry Dale, very famous physiology, physiologist and he's working in the Wellcome Physiological Research Laboratories and wants to publish some of his work. He writes uh, to Henry Wellcome, as you have to do in those days, and probably still do in these days, I would imagine. If you want to publish work and you're working for a big company, then it has to be okayed. Now, in Dale's first draft of the paper, 1904, I believe this is, he wants to use the phrase adrenaline in, in respect of the, the compound that they're using. Henry Wellcome comes back and says, no, well, we don't want to infringe the patent that Park Davis have, so we prefer that if you called it epinephrine. Dale, of course, resists because he says that all of the physiologists in Britain and Europe and Japan are using the word adrenaline, so to call it epinephrine would be confusing. And there starts a... a an exchange of letters between Wel Henry Wellcome and Henry Dale um, in which the, the Wellcome Chemical Research Lab who used the phrase epinephrine also chip in but in the end Dale wins and the paper goes ahead and is published using the word adrenaline but even to this day we still have scientists, researchers in the UK and in Europe probably in Japan too, referring to the extract from the adrenal gland as adrenaline, whereas over in America, they're still calling it epinephrine. Now, which is correct? I would leave it up to you to choose. Um, my preference is adrenaline because I have an interest in adrenoceptors, alpha adrenoceptors, beta adrenoceptors. Nerves that contain noradrenaline are referred to as adrenergic fibres, we talk about adrenergic nerves, adrenergic responses. So to me, it makes more sense to call it adrenaline, but it's up to you which you choose. I suppose the key message from this is though that epinephrine and adrenaline are just the same things. You choose which one you want to use.